just wanted to see if you were alive. We are seeing God move all over the world, and, and a lot of times you say that, and you say, well, that's a catchphrase, but God is indeed up to something around the world. It seems that people are hungry for Jesus like they never have been before. And those who have not yet found him are hungry for something. And I think that's why those of us who know him need to tell them that Jesus is what you need. Jesus is what you're hungry for. 
I can't wait to see what God's going to do in the next few years in the world. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. I'm excited. Tonight, we're going to baptize some candidates who have accepted Jesus Christ and have made a profession of faith, and they're going to follow the Lord in water baptism. And we believe at Brownsville that it's a commandment to be baptized. It's not an option to follow the Lord in water baptism. When these, uh, these folks are finished with their baptisms, we're going to come back and worship the Lord some more. But right now, keep your heart worshiping as you listen to what God is doing in their lives. God bless you. Sandra from Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> well, I used to think that all I had to do was say, say and then I'd be saved. And every night, I, God forgive me, I think that before I die, then I'm heaven. But when I came down here to the revival, God just touched me so hard, man. And... <laughs> And I couldn't even say shut up to my little brother for about two years. <laughs> and then I, I just told him one day, one day cause he got, he got on my nerves like so, so bad. And I came back to revival again and God like threw me down to the floor again. And I'm like back with God again. <laughs> Sandra, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hi, my name is Deborah, and I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and that was my little girl. And I came down to Revival about two and a half years ago. And a friend of mine, Alan and Ruth Mather, played these videos in Tulsa. And I didn't tell anybody because they were all on fire for God. And I thought, that's just flesh. But I was born and raised in Pensacola. And I never wanted to come back here, but my mother lives here. So I said, well, I'll come, come back just to say hi to Mom. And I came in Revival, and my children were touched, and they were shaking. And, and I was binding the devil because people were shaking, but they kept shaking. <laughs> and uh, they called me and told me to pick up my daughter and take her back to my mom's. And, and I was like, man, I can't do that. My, my mom and, and my stepdad are Catholic, and, and they love God with all their heart, you know. And, but I didn't, know, you know, I didn't know how they would take that because actually it, I was embarrassed. You know, and I didn't, I didn't think it was God, but I stayed awake all night, and I said, God, if that's you, I want it, because I don't want to miss you. And I came in the next night, and everybody's chasing these people around getting prayer, and I, I wasn't chasing nobody. I was just standing there talking to these people from Arkansas, because I'm from up in Oklahoma, and it ended up that uh, Pastor Kilpatrick bumped into my side. I didn't know who it was, and right when somebody bumped into my side, I knew that was the Spirit of God like I'd never known before and I started shaking and I turned and it was Pastor Kilpatrick and I remember I didn't care who heard me I said God I've never known you like that but I know that's you and I said I'm not chasing that man but I want what he's got <laughs> and, and uh, the Lord ministered my heart to stand in the back of the church I said God they're up here and he said go to the back of the church and I went back there and, and Pastor Kilpatrick come across the aisle and he just said more Jesus and next thing I know I heard my head hit a pew and when, when I got up, all I know is that all I could say is God is awesome. And I was trying to tell people, I'm not trying to say this. And I was going, God is awesome. God is awesome. And I'm thinking, I'm not trying to say this. <laughs> and and that's, that's all I could do. And God totally changed my life and changed my family's life. And all I got to tell you, if you don't think God's real, 
if you don't think this is real, I, I just, I don't even know the word to say. I just ask you to ask the Lord, God, you're a good dad, and if this is real, you show me, because God wants to change your life. My life has changed, you guys. My life has changed. I'm Candace. I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> Uh, I went to church all my life, and I thought, you know, I wanted Jesus as a, as a Savior. I wanted that free ticket to heaven. But since I was real little, I was never taught I had to go to the Word. I had to live a Christian life, and I was never taught any of that. And so I, I grew up just religious. And I... <laughs> As, as a kid, I've always, I've always been overweight, so I was always teased because I was fat, and I was ugly, and I was always a loner. And it, you know, through elementary school, I had two friends, and in middle school, I had none. And um, I started going, I started smoking and drinking, and I just, I did not care for my parents at all. I wouldn't listen to them. I, I lived a double life, you know, at church. I was one person, at the other I wasn't. And, um, and the whole time I was saying I was a Christian at school and stuff. And I led some of my friends away. Some of the people that looked up to me, I led them away because I said I was a Christian. And they, I, I started at high school in freshman year. Um, I met one of my friends and he just showed me godly love. And he brought me here in October, and I got, I, I, I came up to the altars, and I got changed. And then, um, after that, in November, we came back down here, and I was healed of some diseases that just, there's nothing that the doctors could have done. They were non-curable. I had to live with them the rest of my life, and I was just, I was healed, and <laughs> All the way up, Candace. Candace, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Lisa and I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, I got I got saved in October of this last year, and um, I I thought I really knew God, but I I didn't, and I told everybody that I did, but I didn't, and he he really changed my life, and I still didn't I didn't really know him, and this these past few days he's he's really he's touched me. Like, like he's never touched me before, and it's really changed my life. And he told me to get baptized last night, so I'm here. <laughs> My name is Keisha Hackbarth. I'm from Dubuque, Iowa, but I go to a Bible training center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. Jesus is so good. He's so good. Um, God has done so much for me. Hallelujah. Um, about two months ago, um, I got a hold of a tape from Brownsville that changed my life. I knew God... I knew Jesus as, as, as Lord and as Savior, but I didn't, I didn't know his love, and I didn't really know him intimately. I knew discipline, 
and that was it. But I listened to some testimonies of people getting baptized here, and it got to my heart. Listening to people who really had something, and I wanted what they had so bad. They had something with God that I wanted, that I needed, and I knew I needed it. I needed a real touch in my heart from Jesus. I wanted to be intimate with him. So I, I, I started going to a Bible study, and uh, two weeks ago, on Saturday, two weeks from today, I watched a video from Brownsville, and that you guys sang this song, and it said, I'm sorry for the things I've done, but it's all about you, Jesus. It's not about me, it's all about you, Jesus. And something broke in me that day, and I was screaming at the top of my lungs, I gotta know God, I gotta know God. And he put a burden in me so strong that I couldn't let it go out. I said, there's no way, I can't let this go. I don't care about the world. I don't care about sin. I don't care about people. I just want to be with God. And I'm not going to let this go. I don't care who tries to stop me. Nobody can stop what I have inside. Nobody can take this away. And I won't let anybody take this away. Last... Two nights ago, God talked to me in the youth service, and he told me, now I know I, that you love me because you're obedient to me. And I didn't understand that kind of love, but God showed me. And last night, he set me free of sin I didn't even know existed. He set me free of religion and pride and thinking that I am somebody because I know some word. I ain't nobody without him. I'm nothing. I do not have the right to tell other people who they are just because I know some Bible. Jesus is Lord. He's Savior. He's my King. He's my Prince of Peace. He's the lover of my soul. And I'm fully prepared to die for him right now. I want to be a martyr for Jesus Christ, and I want everybody to know it. My name is Laura. I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. The Lord led me here, and I came to receive a deeper anointing. And last night, the Lord broke bondages in my life. And I had been baptized before, but it had been a long time. And when the pastor said, when he said, we should be baptized. You should be baptized. The Lord spoke to my heart, and he told me to be baptized again. And he broke the bondage of pride and my will. And so I just, I told him I wanted to be baptized, and I love the Lord with all my heart. I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hi, I'm Nicole Shellhammer. I'm from Finley, Ohio. And last year in January in 1998, I came here and the Lord just blessed me here, and I was saved. I never grew up in a church, and I didn't know about anything, and I, I went back home, and I, I wasn't really living the life I should have been, and in March of 1998, I came back, and ever since then, I've just been living a life that Jesus wanted me to, and it's, it's, it's been awesome, and I thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. We baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Um, I'm kind of nervous, and I said I wasn't going to cry, but I think I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Uh, 
the Lord to save me from a cold, stale, religious attitude when I was dead. And about a year and a half ago, they started praying, playing the Brownsville tapes at our church. <laughs> and something happened to me when I saw the first one. And my life was changed. But when I was baptized a long time ago, I was stale. Now I have a new walk, and this walk is going to hit our church. And I didn't ever think I'd get to come, but some friends from our church brought me. And the Lord told me to get baptized last night. And I just, I want a new thing with the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth. I was raised in Satanism six generations. Um, Tuesday before last, I was supposed to commit. I was made plans to commit suicide last Sunday. Um, and this friend of mine I met at a, at a concert who goes here named Kim said that her God was more powerful than mine and she was going to send me a ticket and if my God couldn't help me that I could come back to Oregon and kill myself. So I came down here and it took about four and a half days, and, and I came here, and I was like, yeah, God can't deliver me of all the millions of demons in me, and um, everything went wrong on the trip, and things started breaking down, almost didn't get here, and so um, the demons, when Pastor Kilpatrick came over and said, they, they kept saying, well, he's not going to, he's not, we're not going to leave, and so it was like, I told God, it says, if you can get all these millions and thousands of demons out of me, first, I'll commit my life to you, because that will show me how much more powerful you are than Satan, because I was always taught that Satan was God, and so... And so, um, somehow, Pastor Steve came over, and I told him, the demons are not going to leave, and all of a sudden, I remember him just saying the demons are going to leave in Jesus' name. And all of a sudden, I don't remember all what happened. They just started getting really upset. And the next thing I knew, I woke up and the demons were gone. And so then... Jesus Christ, and this is just to show Satan and everybody that I'm never going back to Satanism or my family. And that. And that I'm just, I'm, I'm going to serve this God 120% just as I serve Satan. And I'm just, this is the true one, true God is Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Elizabeth, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus! Yes! Yes! Arkansas. <laughs> Last year in March, my husband called a youth pastor friend of his in Minnesota because he was having a struggle with his life. And I had been praying that he would get deliverance and he would get peace. And this friend from Minnesota told him, you need to go to the Brownsville Revival. 
So he called me at about 10 o'clock one morning. I was at work, and he said, Honey, I'm on my way to Pensacola. And he said, I'm going to the revival. I said, Okay. You know, and, and I was kind of like a skeptic. And so when he came back and he walked through the door, the Spirit of the Lord was just all over him. And I said, God, forgive me for ever doubting you. So I watched the video, and I was immediately touched. And he said, I'm going to take you in April. So in April, he brought me down here. And even on the trip, I was being touched by the Spirit because he would get up after his visit down here. He would get up, and he would pray. And, and he would just cry out to God and, and praise him and thank him. And I was just saying, God, God, I want that. I want that kind of deliverance. And so we came down here, and I could just walk on the parking lot, and I could feel the Spirit all over me. And we sat back there. And I couldn't get any further than the last pew on that side. And I just started weeping. And I saw all this crud in my life. And it was as though God was cleaning me out. And, and I, I just almost couldn't make it through the praise and worship. I was just weeping, and I was crying out to God. And I was saying, clean me out, Lord. Get this crowd out of my life. I don't want it hanging around me anymore. I want to live for you, God. I want you in my life forever. And it was so, when Steve Hill was preaching, I was saying, please, get it over with. I want to hear the mercy seat. I want to go down. I want to give my life to God. Thank you, Jesus. And let's praise him. And he will you that when we went back to Arkansas, everybody thought we were just crazy, and I can't believe that he has given me beauty for ashes. Burn, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, my name is Greg Moore, and that was my wife. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right. I came here, well, I was a mess. I was a walking garbage can. As a child, I was lost my family. My four brothers are, are gone. And, uh, you know, every, I was just a magnet for, for weirdos and people. Just, they just zoomed in on me and, and said, you know, I want to spend some time with him. And uh, <laughs> it was a mess. And it was all men. I mean, it, was, it, was not, it wasn't good. And, uh, you know, there was one person in my life, man. There was one man, he was younger than me, who, who told me about Jesus and, and put up with me unconditionally and, and, and called me and, and, and just bugged me and, uh, and, and told me the word. One man in my life. To, and I, I just don't... Paul Mackey, thank you. And I... Uh, you know, I, I still didn't know the Lord, but this, he showed me the Lord. He, he told me about him, and, and I, he was the only, only person. And I, uh, I, I tried to serve the Lord, and, you know, I never knew him. It never touched me. I, I just knew that every, he was out there. And I drug my wife from one church to the other, denomination after denomination. And... Uh, it was a while since it's been 10 years since I've seen Paul. He's a youth pastor in Minnesota, and I, I called him and told him, you know, God, if 
forgot me. He, he doesn't, he doesn't, uh, you know, he doesn't know me. And Paul told me to go to the Brownsville Revival in Pensacola, Florida. Yeah, okay. So uh, <laughs> I got up the next day and went to work at 9 o'clock. I rolled up my tools and called my wife. I was south of Florida, Pensacola bound. I said, this is it. It was like a one-way trip for me. You know, it, I, I didn't want to go home. My, my prayers were death. I wanted it. And I zoomed down here. I mean, I, I walked in them doors, and I stood by the air-conditioned vents, and it was, a, it was a full house. And one song later, Steve Hill got up if March 19th, 1998, smooth talker, blind walker. I got proof. And he called me out. He said, there's one man, there's, there's a man here who, uh, you know, the God, he just called me out. I, I was, at first I didn't come, and six or seven men came down there, and you got up and said, you still ain't came. I knew better to take a chance. And... <laughs> I walked down that aisle, and uh, it was awesome. It was awesome. You critics, you don't know. I was a mess, and I turned around and walked away. I didn't know nothing about prayer after church. I, that was my first trip. I didn't even know it. That, and I went home, and I was drug-free for the first time in my life. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. And this is my 13th trip in a year. Oh, a year last Friday. And it's our vacation. And uh, i just thankful. I, I just thank you. I thank you all for being the men that you are. You know, it, and standing up and, and the simplicity and uh, just for what the Lord is doing here. You know, it's, it's real. Put your walls down, and he'll let he'll he'll come into your life. I, you know, I, I can't. I only had two minutes. I can't tell you the garbage that come in, and God just cleaned me without nobody touched me. I just said a simple little prayer in my life, as it, it will never be the same. Thank you, Jesus. Our church group has come, but I guess this makes the third time, and the first couple of times, I just didn't see any reason for me to come, and this time, one of the people at the church said, well, how about if I give you the money to pay your way to go, and I said, well, I just need to get the time off, and I went to the boss lady, and I said, um, um, we're planning on going down to Florida for Friday and Saturday, can I have it off? Um, if you want me to, I'll stay, I really will, and, you know, I'll stay. <laughs> um, she comes back five days later and tells me I have it off to get here, and um, last night I got down at the altar and got rid of some secret sins in my life that were just causing a barrier between me and the Lord. So. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yes. Praise you, Lord. My name's Jim Coggin. I'm an infantry colonel in the United States Army. And my soul stands erect tonight. Before you, the heavenly host and the demons in hell, to say that Jesus Christ is my Savior and He is my Lord. It's not always been that way. 
I grew up on a small farm in North Carolina. I accepted the Lord as my Savior as a young child, but I did not, not accept Him as the Lord of my life. I came here uh, for the first time last summer in July, and what I had seen dimly before, I saw face to face. And I thank the Lord for that. And I went back to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, and I told members of my Sunday school class and people in church and anybody else who would hear that the Lord is real, that He loves you unconditionally, and He wants to see everyone saved and brought home. To and so I brought three, three van loads back in, in October. <laughs> we drove all night long. And I was sitting in that aisle and saw a drill sergeant come to Jesus Christ. Pra praise the Lord. But I also came down myself and confronted a sin in my life. The Lord wanted to cleanse me. The Lord, I said, Lord, use me. He said, well, you got to be cleansed first. So I came down and got things right with the Lord. And I've asked him to continue to use me. So here I am, Lord. I'm, I'm going to the Pentagon now. I need your prayers. I might be a colonel. I might be a colonel, but I want to be a soldier in the, in the army of Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord. Jim, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. All right. Uh, I'm Andrew. I'd come here the first time a couple of weeks ago. I had fallen out of church and I'd been in sin. And uh, I come here. I, my heart was had a burden to get saved. I come and got saved, but we had to get back so I could go to work. And I missed the uh, baptism. And I always want to be baptized. And a guy come to work, and that I work with, and he said, uh, "We're going to Pensacola next week." He said, "You want to go?" And I said, "What? Well, you know, sure, I want to go. You know, because." You know, I'll go with people that, that wanted to go so we can get some more down here and they can experience what I experienced. And just luckily that uh, we made it in time that I could get baptized here tonight. And tonight, the old me is gone, and Jesus Christ comes through me tonight. My name, my name is Donald, and uh, I'm a liar, and, and, and I ask the Lord to give me the truth that I don't lie to y'all. I've, uh, the, the, I've, I've, I've pursued sin to, right to the gates of death, and the Lord snatched me up time after time after time, and, I, and I'd go back in, in my lust, my dishonesty, my deceit, my pride, my big shotism would pull me back. It would tempt me back. I would be tempted back. And, and each time I'd go back, the bottom would get lower. The lows would get lower. And, and I'd do things that I never dreamed I would do. And, and, and I just can't go no lower. I just can't, I just can't go no lower. I just can't go no lower. And, and, and last night, you know, I came up here. I came up here. And, and just somebody invited me to ride along, kind of, and said, "You got to see this, Don." And and uh, and and I, came, and I came up here, you know. And, and when I was packing my stuff to come up here, I packed some swimming clothes, you know. I figured, well, well, they're having church. I'll slip off to the beach. And I had no clue that I was going to be in this. In this. And <laughs> no clue. No clue. No clue. I had no clue I was going to be here, you know, and and I felt I felt contaminated and dirty all my life, and 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 I never I never never dreamed that I would enter into to the throne room of glory. I, I never dreamed that I would go to heaven. I never dreamed that. I, I I come to church, 
I come to church just, just so I could just live just a little bit better, you know, so I could live just a little bit outside of that hell that I walked in. And, and, and I come to church just so I, this last time just because this guy that I worked with, I, I admired his, his mannerism, and I wanted some of that to rub on me, you know. I had no clue. I had no clue that I was going to get saved. I had no clue I was going to come to Brownsville. Man. I had no clue that I could ever enter in. And, and I've been in that bondage like it was preached last night. And, and when it was preached, I had an altar call, man. I was, I was like, I had one foot ready. I was ready to run. I had my place picked out on that altar. I had my spot Jones on that altar. Two people got in my spot. I pushed them apart. that let me enter it don't never let me go back in my old way and 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 he's he's going he's going to kill that old life that i live it's going to die right here it's going to die old life. it's going to die right here that old liar that old sinner that old con artist that it's going to die right here praise god My name is Josh Parsons. Uh, I was saved here this last September. Uh, but, uh, well, before that, uh, I, me and my mom moved down here from Iuka, Mississippi. And, uh, well, I found the Lord that September, and uh, I backslid three weeks later. And I moved back to Iuka. And uh, I just, I just been living a bad life ever since. And about a month ago, I got in the truck with my mom. I was coming down here to visit, and she said, uh, the Lord's done told me you're going to be saved tonight. I said, what? I said, all right, whatever. And she, well, she prayed for me and everything, and, uh, well, I just, I thought, well, okay, I received the Lord and everything. I really didn't think nothing much about it. So uh, I went to church that next night, and uh, I, I, I didn't go to the altar. I mean, I just thought, you know, well, I'd done been saved and everything. So that, I was going back the next day, and uh, it just dawned on me that that I had to do God's work. I just had to do it. And ever since then, uh, I've been, the Lord's led me to anoint my school and just pray for my friends and my family. And it's just been awesome. Josh, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. James. 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 Yes. James. Pinard, I'm 18. I'm originally from Virginia Beach, but um, I lived down here for about three years. And um, I got saved at my school about a month ago. <laughs> but I didn't know the Lord. It was, I've been away from the Lord from 18 years, and I didn't go to church for about 16 years. And just one day, a friend of mine's high note got me to come to, told me to come to Brownsville and yeah so I did I came to Brownsville and you know I was watching all these people and they was on fire and they were hot for God and I was like man this is awesome I gotta I gotta do that I want to be like this but I didn't know I didn't know I didn't know the Lord and you know I had to start reading the Bible and I, when I started reading the Bible I started understanding and I started learning more and I was still holding on to sins and my pride would not let me go and I pray for the Lord, and I pray that, you know, just to let him go, that I can just let him go one day. And then Steve Hill, just, he was preaching about the, the liars and the sinners, and I was like, just going back in my seat, and I was like, oh, he's got me. <laughs> and I was, 
Oh, and I started feeling guilty. And I started, and then once he called altar call, I just ran up there and I was just started praying and I broke down and I was like, please, just free me. And I got freed and yeah. now I understand the Lord. Yeah. Now I'm on fire and I'm getting all the excess baggage off my back. I just yeah. dropped it and I let it go. And I'm like, praise Lord. My name is Jason Smith, and I'm in the United States Navy, and I, it keeps me away from home a lot, and I can't be around friends and family, and uh, recently I got a hold of one of them, and I hadn't talked to her in a long time, and she told, she told me what's going on up here, and she said, you got to get up here. And so I came up, and I just, I, I, that was it. I, I had to give my life to Jesus, and I did. And I just got to say, Mom, Dad, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you here. Yeah. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Jason, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hello, my name is Kurt Bowers. I'm from Pierce, South Dakota. I'm 38 years old, and I want to give you a warning. I've lived for 37 of those 38 years a life of sin. I've said that I was a Christian, but God's been over here, and I've been over here, and I just kind of rubbed on him once in a while. I've been blessed with a beautiful wife and three beautiful daughters. A wife who's prayed for me for 20 years that I'd come to Jesus, that I'd be honest, that I'd quit being an unfaithful husband, an abusive husband, that I'd just tell the truth. Two weeks ago tonight, I set my family down because my wife couldn't take it anymore. I told her the truth last June, and two weeks ago tonight, I set them down and I told them, I've been an unfaithful husband, an abusive husband, a liar for 20 years. Our 21st anniversary is the 15th of this next month. I'm going home on tomorrow. My wife's planning to divorce me because she doesn't believe that I love Jesus. I want you to real I want you to hear that you can't walk over here and believe that Jesus is real that you really know him unless you really find him. You got to put him in your heart and you got to go after him. I'm giving all the glory to Jesus today and I'm going to run after Jesus as hard as I can. Yes, sir. Please hear what I'm saying. The hurt and the pain that I've caused to my family, they never deserved. No one deserves what I've put them through. But I want to give all the glory to Jesus, and I'm going to go home and trust that Jesus can restore and heal what I destroyed through sin. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of people. <laughs> My name is Glenn. I'm from South Carolina. And I want to give God all the praise and all the glory and all the honor for who I am today. At the age of 21 years old, I was delivered from drugs and alcohol. I was set free. But I failed to deal with the issues of my heart. 
I sat in church for years with a call of God on my life, and I ran from him. And I didn't deal with the anger, and I didn't deal with the strife and the unforgiveness that was in my life. I was miserable, man. I was miserable. Two years ago, God began to deal with my heart. And I knew that it was now or never. I knew the call that he placed on my life. My father's a pastor, by the way. And I knew the call that was placed in my life, that what Jesus had a purpose for my life. And I began to hunger, and I began to thirst for the things of God. And I got real with him. You hear me? I got real with God. For the first time in my life, I got real with God. And he said, come to this revival. I never heard of Brownsville. I never heard of this revival that was going on. And I came, and I got real that night, and I ran to that altar. And Jesus washed me with his blood, and he cleansed me, and he set me free. Oh, Lord, I love you, Jesus. That night, that night, I said in my heart, I will do what you want me to do, Jesus. I will go where you want me to go. And it's been a wild ride, Brother Steve. I've seen people saved and healed and delivered and set free. And recently, the Lord's been dealing with my heart about getting training, about getting in his word and going somewhere where I can be established. And the Lord told me to come to Brownsville. I'm here this weekend on business. I came for a job interview. And I'm coming. I'm planning on moving here. And I'm going to become part of this ministry and part of what God's doing here. And I'm going to grow and I'm going to learn. And I thank you, Lord, that when I leave this place, I'm going to be on fire for you, Jesus. This night, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I give you everything, Jesus. you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hello, my name is Chris Gregory. I'm from Australia. I now live in Texas. I've never known the God. I've uh, never known Lord. Um, my mother came here in the women's conference and she came back telling me she'd spoken to God. I thought she was crazy. <laughs> I now realize that I was the one that was crazy. <laughs> Last night, I was saved. Praise. And, uh, I was delivered from drugs and lies. And after this wash, I just want to walk in Jesus' shoes. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus. My name is Ricky Watkins. I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Man, uh, the Lord's been drawing, uh, drawing near to me this whole week, man. Uh, this week, uh, this is our uh, spring break. I was supposed to go and party with my friends spring break at Ten Killer, Oklahoma. I was supposed to get uh, full of drugs and alcohol, but still I'm here and getting full of the Lord. Yeah! This is great. <laughs> Ever since the age of 13, I have uh, had a bad drug addiction. It gets crank, cocaine, and marijuana. I've been an alcoholic. I've been involved in gangs. And, man, I thought I was saved two years ago, but it was just a proudness overcame upon me when I was saved and sin filled my life. And this week, God called me to Brownsville Revival. He said, when you come to Brownsville Revival, son, I will raise you up. And he, <laughs> oh man, glory to God. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. I got the joy of the Lord upon me right now. Man, 
I can't really, sh I can't stretch it out as much, much as enough. Uh, that's how much the joy has, uh, the joy of the Lord has just filled me up. I mean, I can believe in my heart that my, that my family's going to be saved. My school's going to be freed. I am redeemed of sin. I just thank you so much, and I just want to thank you, Lord, so much for giving me love and grip. <laughs> just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And thank you, God. And I just want to shout out to my family if they see this. I just want to say I love you, Father and Mother, and I want you to be set free just like I am. I'm Nathan Chadwick. I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I just have one thing to say that my Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and nobody's going to take that away from me. Yeah. And I've been delivered from drugs, alcohol, being in gangs, selling drugs, and I just totally got re, you know, reconverted to, to, to know Jesus. I've actually, before I came here, I, um, I went to a Bible study, and I saw a tape on this revival, and it just totally shook me. God shook me. And actually, that next week, I was supposed to work. My boss was on vacation. He's, he's an atheist, actually. And I was like, God, how am I supposed to go on this? You told me I'm supposed to go on this, on this revival thing. And so I was, I was praying about it, and I was talking to all my friends, and I went home. I called my boss, and he was totally okay with it. And, he's, you know, he, he was willing to go to church with me and all that stuff, so I don't think he's atheist af after all, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just willing to, to be on fire. I'm going to go home and just go in all the fast food restaurants and just stand on the tables and proclaim <laughs> Jesus Christ. Guys, I'm the happiest person in the world right now. My name is Paul Lawson. I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I'm going to take this really quick because, you know, right, right now, my Lord Jesus wants me to get baptized. So I'm going to go really quick right here. But, um, so go now? Hold on, I'm going to tell you something real quick. Um, <laughs> okay, um, well, I'll, I'll say this. I'm not on fire for Jesus. I'm just hungry to know him. That's all I got to say. I'm hungry to know Jesus Christ. I've been hungry for him for about two years. One of my really close friends, Julie DeLong, wherever you are, hi. She, uh, she led me to a group of uh, people who were radical for Jesus Christ. They became my spiritual family, my mom and dad. They were a part of the Asbury Revival. They've been going to this revival for a couple of years. They, they got me hooked up with some Brownsville tapes. I'll tell you right now, you guys, I can't get away from the Spirit of God. Ever since I saw those tapes, I have not gotten away from the Spirit of God. He, he has come to me in my dreams. He's come to me on my little times when I'm just by myself. The Lord talked to me one time. He says, Paul, you have pride in your heart. He says, Paul, you have lust in your heart. Paul, you have self-ambition in your heart. He said, there is no room for my spirit in your heart. I'll tell you right now, that scared me to death. Because my God that I read in the Bible, he's a God of the whole universe in the palm of his hands. And if he's that big of a God, I'm scared if he says he doesn't want me. I'm scared if he says there's no room in my heart. So that woke me up. I repented. About two weeks before I came to survival, well, actually, before that, I, I was thinking about going to a ski trip. And thank God for, for people who are accountable. I had two girls beat me up, make sure I was coming here. <laughs> but um, the Lord spoke to me and told me that, Paul, about two weeks, he said, I, 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 in the supernatural realm, something was coming up inside me saying, you have got to get here. It's like the soil is calling my name out. Something from God. It wasn't the people who were beating me up. It wasn't the people I was on, on the tapes. It was God calling me by my name. The Bible says he has called you by my name, and I am his. I belong to him. And when I came here, I found out what I, what I came here for. As soon as I came in here, the power of God hit me. 
hit me hard. I began weeping and crying. I knew that something was going to happen. Last night is when it happened. Last night is when it happened. Steve gave the word, and I thank God for that word so much because it set me free. Those shackles that are binding me, yeah. it revealed something. God's glory revealed something to me that I didn't see before. It, it was a light into my path. I saw something that I, it, it was a stumbling block that I've been stumbling for a long time. And when it showed it to me, I have got to get out of my life. That's what I said to God. I ran to the altar, got on my knees and said, God, and I'm going to tell you right now, when you hear God's voice, that's the most beautiful thing in the world. There ain't a girl on the face of this earth that can give me the kind of joy that God gave me that night, last night. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, the shackles are free. Come and follow me and run with me. I said back to him, God, I'm going to follow you, and I'm going to run with you to the days of my life, and I'm taking you back to Tulsa. Lord, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Woo!